thank you. Yeah, good morning, Pastor. Elder of FBC. Good morning. Good morning. Very good morning, and also guests from different part of the world, from and also from Indonesia side, Donda, and from some churches in Sarawak, and also I think it's from West Malaysia. I don't know Singapore. I did invite some to join us. Amen. With this Zoom, is so convenient. Okay, today my testimony I'm going to share is church at prison. Somebody may ask why there is a church in prison. It was a few years ago. When I go to prison, like uh, the feeling is something like Rotary Club and uh, Lions Club for me. And the Lord convicted me because, and then I start to think. And this is the word church at prison. Amen. And this church of prison, when it's given, I think it's quite prophetic, you know. And this prison, all the physical, or this church, the physical facility are all managed by the government. But we had to subject to them to get in. Okay. And today we are under lockdown. All the inmates, all the members inside this church have been locked down some for 10 years, 20 years. <laughs> they already experienced lockdown long, long ago. <laughs> Amen. And church and the prison is divided into four parts. The inner mosque is the dead row, the most high security area for capital uh, punishment. And then for drug smuggling, for murder, and outside, there is a group serving term. Could be two years, three years, five years of life imprisonment. And they gather together uh, in main hall so that sharing can be done, but not for the dead law. I'll share it further later on. And then you have the, the, the youth under Henry Ghani, which song is very familiar and you have the ladies section. So there are four sections inside uh, prison. And today I'm going to share with you uh, based on the testimony, and it is very clear about judgment, grace and testing and God's sovereign will. And this is the title and it is related. It encompasses the whole thing about judgment, grace, testing and sovereign will. Okay, from the dead row, and in Malay, it's called block of hell. Wait, huh? oh. Okay, Uncle Ben. This is Uncle Ben. Uncle Ben is a one last week. Dr. Wong shared about fruitfulness. I honor this man called uh, Uncle Ben. I think 90 years old, unfortunately, he's not coming to the Zoom, but I did call him. And he has served faithfully in this ministry for 20 over years. And he is someone which could, by his experience and his prayer, is a great blessing to the church, I believe, and to the ministry, or rather church in the prison. And beside this, I think he encouraged some, myself, Arthurlyn, Boone, Pastor George, and together with many uh, volunteers and other church pastors to come together to serve in this uh, church. It is wonderful, and he is also a worshiper. And he is good in playing cymbal. If you happen to see him in some gathering last few years, doing the Jubilee prayer across uh, Sarawak, or, and doing Saturday, we do have some before the lockdown. 
we gather together to pray together. We use traditional instrument. He's good in the drum. So this is the background. And I believe he has served very, very faithful in this area. That is a great encouragement to me. And uh, in the block of hell, it's very interesting as well. They wouldn't allow many people to get in and only two person. And I'm quite privileged, I call it, to be the, uh, asked by Uncle Ben to join him to go into the block of hell, which we could only go in fortnightly, subject to the availability of escort, okay? Why the outside group, once a month, there's an opportunity or at time, Tuesday and Friday, every week, again, subject to the availability of uh, escort and the manpower within the prison, okay? So, inside this deck row or in the prison, this is a unique church that there's no smartphone that we could bring in as people from outside murder the, the inmates. So we are free from one unique instrument called smartphone, no distraction. And, and this is when we get in, it could be three, four hours driving up and down and all this one session. But in this particular area, when we get in, we could serve only about one and a quarter of the most an hour. And in the dead row, the inmates have been placed under individual room or cell that is about 10 meters square or eight to 10 meters square, square meter. And highly secured with all the bars. So when we start sharing, uh, we get in, we have to go to individual. That means we go and spend 10, 10, 20 minutes, depend on the need, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. When we arrive, everyone are expecting us to spend time with them. But we have to divide out of the one hour on a quarter for this particular case. It's not a group that come together, you know, and we just speak one hour, they receive one hour. This is unique. It's a very, I used to quote, just now, I think Pastor Malcolm, before we start, he reminded me or sometime. Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. He said, forget the former things, see the new things. You know, there's water in the desert. Amen. Rivers of water will flow in the desert. And I consider this place is a desert dry church. Very dry. You know. We are subject to so many conditions of getting in, and at the same time, we have limited time, limited time to minister. But based on this verse, we expect rivers of water to flow. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen? And in this picture, which I pick up from the internet, it resembling something in the dead row. And it is grace of God that I'm able to bring the shofar. So I will stand there, I will blast the shofar when I arrive and harmonica. And we only sing two songs. We don't have the privilege of teaching so many songs. It's only the children's Sunday school song, Jesus Love Me, This I Know. And we will sing another song, which is an Indonesian song. Saya cinta Jesus selama lamanya. Amen. So I used to blow this and the music. This about all we could do the worship with them because of time and also the opportunity to teach a bit limited. And uh, there are about seven emails normally. So we share out. Uncle Ben and my ourselves will share out and run around and then share with them. And there are people we are not supposed to share. And there are people who refuse to be, to be attended to, although they can be uh, attended to, you know? But still, we are able to do. And in this play, we speak three languages, English, Mandarin, and Bahasa Malaysia, because different races uh, of the different races. So this is called 
a physical background of the block I have. This is a picture from the newspaper. You look at it, especially for us when we have uh, dealt with them, made them, you know, you just have a different feeling. Excuse me. But you could see this is something that uh, uh, a judgment, painful judgment, a sign of very painful judgment. And it is a difficult time for them. And when you meet them, this is really uh, very desert dry. We only can pray. We do not know how. We can feel the same as they feel, although we may feel sad. And they come out for court cases, okay? And we are going to speak. This is a case whereby Chan and his second wife involved in drug trafficking and received the capital punishment of death penalty. Both received Christ in prison and they appealed for acquittal. Being an expectant wife when was caught, so the wife birthed a son. Can you imagine it's a family? The wife is in different cells in the ladies' section. Why Chan is together with the seven and the race. And as usual, when you, there are many questions, especially for people with this type of organization, when they are caught, they have been betrayed. They have hatred of those who betrayed them. And they question many questions, why me? In actual fact, if all are caught, involved with this, the prison is not sufficient to take them. There's so many not caught. So it's very difficult to tell them a final words, you are very fortunate to be caught, which is could be hurting. But as we share, as I shared, and you see, then you realize what is life all about. Amen. And this is they are serving the penalty, what they have done in life. You know, they're caught and they serve the penalty, a very painful penalty you know, involving family. And this is very, very, very uh, unique case involving husband and wife when the child was born, okay? Only if the wife was set free after close to five years in prison, after they plead for acquittal. And this man was very happy. The wife had been set free and he, is hopeful. He was hopeful, you know, hopeful for the next. So we only able to see them twice, uh, once every, uh, twice every month. So after a few weeks later, we pay him a visit again. We are quite happy to see and to hear and meet him as well together. But a few weeks later, he was on suicide, suicide mode, banging his head against the wall. And when we saw him, we met him, and the warden shipped him actually from one place, one the other, another cell to a cell that is nearer to the warden, where the warden can see him 24-7, that he would not commit suicide. This is a desperation, a great desperation from happiness, joy, it, become a tasting. From the judgment, he served the penalty. And today, with this situation on suicide among, he was undergoing great tasting. He banged his head against the wall. Why? And why me? Why? Because 
he received news that the wife could not stand all the pressure and decided and planned to divorce him. So this is very dear. He has only one, the wife who understand her and the wife chose to divorce him and he could not take it. And this also, I believe, happened outside the prison where relationship fell and many people are having testing as well. So I believe this message will help, you know? This message will help as we go through. There are questions say, why me? I have, you could see this is, I use the word to say, this is double dry, dry. He's in a dry situation. I use the word double dry, dry, you know, from judgment to tasting. Amen, amen. So we have to see what God, this is an extremely dry, you know, very, very dry situation. So I use the word, my version, sama, sama, we always use in Malay, double, double. So I use double, dry, dry. So if you are in double, dry, dry situation, I hope and I pray the spirit, Holy Spirit of uh, revelation and wisdom will trigger and minister to you. Amen. So I went back with Uncle Ben. It's quite a unique situation. And we pray for him then, and we pray when we came home. When we pray, we know this is a dry, dry situation. We need the Holy Spirit. It's not about the, not about counseling, that the privilege of having counseling privilege of ministering, we want to believe God, direct intervention. And in this verse, we claim Ephesians 17, this is what Paul say, I keep asking that the God of our Lord, Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you know him better. In all situation, it's the spirit of wisdom and revelation should work in our life. And I've been praying the same for all of you who are listening and for myself who is sharing that the spirit of wisdom and revelation work in our midst. As you hear, as I speak, we need the spirit of wisdom and revelation to review and to, to show us what exactly the truth of the moment you know, that can set us free in the way God wants us to know and touch us. And we depend on the power of the Holy Spirit. And I believe the impossible become possible. Why? Because it's the Spirit that is working. Not my mind, not my power, but the power of the Holy Spirit. And there's the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Amen. Amen. So I pray that as you are listening now, as I share further, I pray that, and you yourself pray and say, Lord, Holy Spirit of wisdom, revelation, help me, help me to listen. Help me to listen. If you're having struggling to listen or there are other distractions that are surrounding you right now. And I am praying the same. That I have no distraction, but I want the Holy Spirit to minister to each one of us, including myself, through this session. And I don't want to add on to my own thinking and intention of how to present this. My desire is to present the way the Holy Spirit wanted to be present and to touch, and I believe, river of water flow through desert. Amen. So here, I'm going to read to you. I know I have the time. Uh, I may have about another 15, 20 minutes to go through. And uh, I will read quite fast because I have given you the words. I will emphasize on those the Holy Spirit want me to emphasize. Surely good, God is good to Israel, chosen race, chosen nation, to those who are pure in heart. And we, in Christ, we could consider we are righteous. So God is good to us, 
As for me, my feet almost slip. He's speaking about a person in under testing, the testing, just like Job. Uh, my feet nearly, nearly, nearly slip, and I nearly lost my football. And this is the spirit of envy. I feel the arrogance when I saw the prosperity of wicked. They have no struggle. Their body are healthy and strong. Here you are talking about health and prosperity. You know, and prosperity, health and prosperity. Prosperity, if you see the sequence of things, it is first, prosperity is the least important, come to the family members, and finally, it's the health of the person. Health of person is the most important. Then next is the family members, and finally, is well. But this particular group have everything. Okay, so he saw the arrogance and the spirit of arrogance. Okay, they are free from common burdens. They are not perched by human ill. Therefore, pride is their necklace. They clothe themselves with violence. I believe when we share this with Chan, this is not the whole extreme. This is a very extreme situation, but he has something related to this, you know. Amen. So this year we are talking about Arrogance, we are talking about human use, pride, the pride in their necklace and the clothes with violence, and violence is in the picture. They have colors heart become with iniquity, evil imagination have no limits. It's, this is real, and God read, wrote, this is written words of the Lord, and it is real. You may not see. In my lifetime, it has happened, and I believe it will happen again with people like that. They scorn and speak with malice, with arrogance, they threaten oppression. The spirit of arrogance, the spirit, it is a very tough. Their mouth lay claim to heaven, and their tongue take possession of the earth. Therefore, people turn to them and bring up waters in the abundance. You may be questioning why they have a lot of followers. You may ask, why the church have not so many followers? Amen. This group have followers. Amen. Amen. These are questions sometimes pastor will ask. You know, pastor will ask such a question or church leaders. Why nobody come in a, in a village or something, you know? It's all have to do with your heart. Amen. They even could say, how could God knows? Does the Most High know anything? They live as if they are above God. This is what the wicked are like, free of care, and they go on amazing well. Under such situation, when they amaze well, they will keep the well. It's not free, freely distributed. Amen. This is a situation that is very unique. So this man said, surely in vain I have kept my heart pure. I washed my hand in innocent. He tried. All day long I've been afflicted, I believe, and every morning bring new punishment. If I had spoken like that, I have betrayed your children. There was a turning point. God touched this person. Amen? How? How could he be touched? He said, I tried to understand all this. It troubled me deeply. Till I entered the century of God, then I understood their destiny, final destiny. There is a final destiny for every single one of us. But if we are in trouble, we can enter the century in tears, in cry, in constrict heart to understand your situation. It's difficult to understand many things. When I was young, I couldn't understand. I have same same question. Same question, asking myself, why like this, why like that? But today, I'm more matured with the help of fellow friends and also the power of the Holy Spirit, a bit more wise. I hope all of us are in the category. We need to have the prayer index increase. We need to seek God and ask God and be so close that we understand many things in our life, irrespective of the situation, okay? 
when we do things, sometimes we we reap what we saw. We do something wrong, and that is the negative thing that we will happen to us. But if we do something wrong against God. Hi, Te Hua is today. I think his line is lagging. Yeah. Oh, I think his I think his uh his PC probably got interrupted by something. Yeah. Uh, Tequa just called. Uh, his uh, battery ran out, so just give him a, a few moments. Uh, he's trying to come up alternative. Uh, over to you, uh, Michael Bain, uh, in the meantime. <laughs> 